Anyway, I'd love to open the floor to more questions if anyone has any. You know, actually, I've got a couple questions about the bike share since you ended on that. Um, the Montreal one just started. Have, I assume that you've, you've gone up there and tested it out. What are some of the, um, what are some of the successes, I guess, and maybe the challenges that it's been facing? The Montreal Bike Share program is, is really fantastic. We actually put out an RFP. Uh, Montreal, the public bike systems program, responded in uh, one as the preferred vendor. One of the problems we saw internationally in Paris was a theft problem, and it seems that Montreal, through excellent engineering, has really figured that out, and their theft is down to about 3%. Some of the issues for bike share in the United States is liability were much more of a, a society where people sue each other and also the helmet issue people really uh, they wear helmets here and they rely on it and there is not yet a solution to having helmets distributed that's um, that's as robust as people would like. Do you look at um, international cities? We look at pretty much every city as a model city um, but some of the best ones we look at are um, Portland Oregon which is known as probably the most bike friendly city in the US we look at a lot of the European cities, um, and specifically we look at uh, northeast cities that have snow. Uh, New York City, Montreal, Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, which is not quite northeast, but my geography is never very good, um, and the snow is key. Uh, Portland, we are seeing sort of what's cutting edge in the United States. New York City has done some really fantastic stuff around protected bike lanes. Uh, Montreal has the bike share. Um, and Chicago, Philadelphia, obviously just great models. Uh, Philadelphia in particular is, uh, is a tight city, just like Boston. It's coming from um, Rebecca Roosh, and the question is, what about helmets in the bike share program? Uh, in our proposal RFP, we said that we require the vendor to be in compliance with the Massachusetts State Bicyclist Safety Bill, which says you have to have helmets available at the time of a rental. Probably what will happen is if you become an annual member, you can get a free or reduced price helmet and it's mailed to you. Otherwise, there'll probably be some agreement with a local retail shop that's a chain. It could be a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts, and there's about uh, five per block. Uh, there's usually one non-Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts on a street in Boston, uh, and um, they might be able to supply helmets. Um, but helmets would not be rented. They would be bought at a very low price. I've got another question here coming from Yuka Unida, and the question is, what are some of the ways that Boston is planning to combat bike theft issues that have plagued other cities that have implemented bike sharing programs? Well, uh, bike theft is a double-edged sword. If our program is successful, more people are biking and there are more thefts. Our Stolen Bike Boston program is really helping us with the theft. Uh, being able to register bikes easily and work with the police to recover them and the Boston police have been phenomenally supportive. Two, putting in racks, uh, racks that are uh, safe to lock to will reduce theft and three, education, use a bike lock. I'm going to, um, on that note, I'm actually going to take it to a question that's not specifically about bike share, it's more just about in, in infrastructure in general. And the question comes from Ben Salence. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Ben. Um, the question is, have you considered raised bike lanes, such as Copenhagen's model? We have looked at the Copenhagen model with raised bike lanes. In fact, one of the few true cycle tracks is in Cambridge, one city over on Vassar Street. And it's an intriguing model. It helps us reach out to that uh, more novice or new cyclist that uh, is a little more shy of the traffic. There's definitely some advantages and disadvantages. The plowing issue can be challenging in the winter and also pedestrian bike conflicts. We're also looking at New York City's protected bike lanes, like I showed in the earlier slide, which has a lot of the same advantages. It's also significantly cheaper. Um, here's a really good one that is, is a more general question coming from Stephen Berku. What about tax or other financial incentives for bicycle commuters? Uh, actually, a, a bicycle benefit bill just passed and it allows uh, about $120 per year of tax credit for bicycle purchases. The um, bicycle benef commuter benefit tax, I, th I think that's the official name, uh, must be through an employer. So if your employer doesn't support the program, then it doesn't work. We've got a bunch of questions coming in regarding um, transit. 
One of the questions is, does the city coordinate with the N MBTA regarding training bus drivers on proper driving behavior around bicycles? Um, we have a great working relationship with the Mass Bay Transit Authority, the MBTA, and uh, they've done a lot in terms of putting bikes on uh, buses, bike racks on buses, um, and putting in bike cages. Uh, very impressive work, and we're definitely talking to them about uh, bus drivers and cyclists. That's, that's good to hear. And this is actually another question coming from Bik Shar, and it was a question that I wanted to ask you as well. Um, are you seeing any objections from like, local businesses, city officials, and if so, what are they? I have to say the city of Boston has been fantastic in, in following Mayor Menino's lead, and a lot is that the mayor is uh, so supportive and so sincere about this effort. Every department has really fallen in line and all the city officials have fallen in line to support what they know is a very important initiative. Uh, and, and it's part of a much bigger picture, the mayor's health initiatives and the mayor's environmental initiatives. Uh, local businesses, uh, again, the public has been really supportive. We had a couple of businesses already request removing parking for bike racks. Uh, the Alston Village Main Streets uh, was all in favor of uh, bike lane on their street. Um, overall, it's been a very positive, positive initiative. Yeah, that seems like it's um, a definitely an important one. I mean, I, it, one thing I have to complain about in New York City is that um, a lot of people ride on the sidewalks, and I, I'm sort of sympathetic, like I understand why, because honestly, if I was riding my bike, I would want to be on the sidewalk, because the streets are way too scary, but, um, but it's very obnoxious for people who are trying to walk or push a stroller. Um, so uh, a lot of people ride on the sidewalks when it's um, when their road situation is scary. One of the best things you can do is put in a bike lane. It reduces sidewalk riding 25-fold and astronomical number. Uh, so get in those bike lanes when you can. Uh, Yuka is asking a question, um, and I think you can probably see it here, and I think it's a great question, is what is some advice that you can offer to people who want to start a bike sharing program in their own town, such as New York City? A bike sharing program is very complex, so number one, get talk to the city officials, talk to the mayor and see if they're behind it. If they are, that will open all the doors. If they're not, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, two, there's a website, Paul DeMaio's website, uh, on bike sharing, and it's a blog, and it has the most comprehensive information you could ever want, so do your research. And then three, uh, start reaching out to individuals you want to talk to. Um, and especially other cities that might be a step or two ahead. There's another question that's come in from um, Bik Shar. Thanks, Bik, for asking so many questions. We really appreciate it. <laughs> um, and I think it's a good question. The, the question is, is the city of Boston expecting additional revenues to be generated by this program, or will it break even? Uh, the city of Boston's goal with bike share is really to create a, a green mass transit option. It, it's not about getting revenue. so. Uh, any revenue or profits really will go to expanding the system and making sure we hit every neighborhood. Um, all right, I'm going to see what other questions that we have for you. There is one question, like I did like um, the question about any plans to sponsor design competitions for innovative solutions. We looked and researched uh, design competitions in New York City and San Francisco. Uh, and are, are really impressed by those. So uh, we would like to launch a design competition ourselves for artistic racks this year. That's really exciting, actually. Um, I just wanted to, to let you know that we do a lot of design competitions here at Inhabitat. So if you ever want to do an official design competition and you're looking for a partner, you should uh, get in touch with us because we'd love to do something like that with you. Let's wrap up here. And um, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. And a big thanks to all of you guys who have joined us as well, all the people who've submitted great questions to us. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, again, I'm glad you skipped lunch to, uh, to attend the webinar. And um, hopefully I'll talk to you soon.